<sighs> Hello and welcome to Comic Con uh, recap. And uh, this is Kitty Key, the martial sportist. Yes, um, hold on. I'm doing things. I'm doing things. Still keep it rolling, why not? <laughs> yes, action shot, yes. Ah. Here we have. There we are. Silicon Valley Comic Con uh, 2018. And this is the gi worn by select background character, students of the Jung Suan. No, no logos. When it featured in behind the scenes of some of the movie films made during the time in which Jung Swan and the West Coast Taekwondo were associated. And young Ernie Reyes Jr. loves to be in the movie films. And his and his father, Ernie Reyes, of course. Um, yes, so we have this is this is a uh, studio gi that was in storage. This is not the typical uh, dragon one. This is not the typical later on ones. This is not the Kitty Key purchased one. This is Studio Gi, uh, Dobak. Uh, we got to keep it. I got to keep it. It's found in a box in storage. It was a little small on me. <laughs> I was like 17 or so when I had it. 18. <laughs> I was very skinny. And yeah, so. Here we have, uh, and he wasn't here today. I could not show him it. I could not say, look, this is, yeah, yeah, Yamato, yeah, Yamato, School of, uh, California. This is Three Ninjas, part one, background character, yeah, uncredited. So yes, uh, and, uh, yeah, and some other stuff that was... That is, there was there was a demo in 1990. We had to have these two, um, so this is also what this is from. So we had kept it around, put it away around 93 after the other movie. They all filmed the movies a little few years earlier when they came, when they came out. And yes, this is uh, this was in storage. I wore it. I did not wear the jacket. I couldn't find the jacket. I wore this. Uh, now I've wrinkled it horribly, but yes, the gear here, the dobak. Uh, and the two schools were associated. <laughs> cool. Didn't get to show them that. Anyway, so here we have merch. Merch from yesterday. Mm. The current creature feature show, which airs on TV20, starring these delicious people, the wonderful people, t on on the they, they are the creature feature cast currently. He's sort of an Ozzy Osbourne guy in the middle, and uh, he's sort of Lurch, uh, um, that, uh, yeah. and she's sort of a uh, uh, creepy sort of, she's not really an Elvira thing, she's sort of like the ghost lady from um, like The Ring or something, and among other things, she's sort of like a, 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 like a demon pixie or something. Yes. Um, and here we have... Melinda Snodgrass's book, one of her books. I talked to her again, actually. Finished the finished the uh, story again. How we were um, gonna? Uh, I wanted to finish the story before she left, and she was not. She was in a hurry. She was on her way out, and I said, "Oh, I want to finish the pocketbook story really quick." She's like, "Okay, tell me the pocketbook story, just real quick. I don't have much time." Like, okay, okay. Yes, uh, I submitted that story again to Pocket. I followed uh, Strange New Worlds. I submitted to Strange New Worlds, the Pocket Book story, and um, gave it to give the title. And she said, "Yeah, that that's a name I recognize from Pocket Books. That was a short story." And uh, yes, that's that's because they took it, they used the name, uh, not the story, just the name. And she said, "Yeah, that's what they do." <laughs> Anyway, it's that same same response. And now I have to go. Bye. Um, <laughs> and she left. I also saw Nichelle Nichols. I was on her way out. And, uh, yes. And she was not as tired this time. Yes. Creature Features Volume 1. The new show. A highlight reel. Gag reel is pretty funny. 
Uh, let's see, uh, lots of other things. Uh, M M Michio Kaku uh, and uh, uh, his, his book, his availability. Uh, yes, yeah. He's a scientist. Uh, let's see. Uh, Creature Con, but it will be in San Ramon, Marriott. So it's it's actually at the place where they do Bacon now. But I don't know if I'm going to get to that. Um. <laughs> yes, today's Ernie Ray's picture. Ernie Ray's picture. The other, other Raphael pic. There it is. That's the second one. That's the one. Also, I can't see this one. Uh, the creme de la creme. I'm gonna jump to the creme de la creme. Out of order. Trouble with Tribbles script. Trouble with Tribbles unofficial parody uh, by Robert uh, David Gerald himself or David, as you called him. Yes, and uh, it is it is pretty funny actually. Uh, if Chimera goes into series production after the pilot, I would consider doing this as an episode of Chimera. That would be awesome. <laughs> Do that, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but probably won't go into full production because it takes years. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? All right. The the Winter Twins were there, and they finally came out with the sequel to the Strand Saga, sort of a spinoff, Beauty and the Beast spinoff, PCT, the perfect compatibility test. Um, yeah. And they were hanging out with C.G. Shero's son. I uh, assume one of them is dating him, I guess. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Um, collab. Yeah, collab. Uh, uh, we have uh, free stuff. Uh, the Czar of Noir. Uh, we have from the... We have... Uh, Have okay. We have the Vincent Price collection. Uh, uh, it's it's the second volume of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Racket Theater Triple Terror collection, including the awesome Last Man on Earth and the Bat and the House on Haunted Hill. Because why not? The original. The, not the uh, and here we have a Leonard Nimoy retrospective collection by the great John Stanley. John Stanley. The legendary John Stanley. And here, the last one, we have the unfortunately timed adventure of the haunted wine country. <laughs> yes. Apparently, this, this came out on DVD about two months ago, right around the same time the wine country fires happened. So no one wanted to buy it. But now it is. It was. Got that as well. So that it's probably fine. It has nothing. It's just bad timing. <laughs> uh, someone in the audience asked what well, last year, last well, time around, whether they uh, were going to do a. Uh, what was it? I said they were going to do a Winchester Mystery House thing, and they said, "Well, they already done that." No, there's already videos and stuff. There's a documentary and a movie, so they don't need to do the Winchester Mystery House. Anyway, so yeah, um, breaking character, but I'm not really in the costume, so it's fine. Yeah, so I'm not saying there's going to be a Chimera series that the rate we're doing. If we get the movie finished this year, that would be awesome. Um, but if there was, that would be the first episode. We would do a update of that story. <laughs> the triple sequel. Um, sure. Uh, let's see. <laughs> At the rate they're going, it'll be the 60th anniversary. Um, <laughs> No. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, so this is my uh, Comic-Con update for today, the third day of uh, Silicon Valley Comic-Con. Nothing exciting happened in the past. Not really, uh, Got off and walked um, as a, as a martial sportist 
down down the hallway there. Uh, you'll you'll see it in the slideshow. Uh, that uh, walked past the Amazon building. <laughs> it's, it's Amazon building. Okay, they have a they have a store, a brick and mortar store. Well, with glass and steel, but they call it a brick and mortar. Uh, yeah, uh, among other things, uh, there there's uh, yeah went to the convention. Uh, some stuff that's not on the slide reels. So I tell you about that. I'll do the accents on that. Um, but here I'm just gonna, yeah. It may may waver. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes. Uh, game room time. Yeah. That that I kept calling that vermouth. It wasn't vermouth. It's that other stuff that you that you put in. I keep saying. I know it's not vermouth. It's that silvery stuff they put in tequilas and daiquiris. It's it's not really capsian or something like that. Yeah, it's it's not alcohol. It's just soda. Uh, it's it's a flavoring that they put in clear clear drinks. Yes, it's not. Uh, yes, so so yeah, the lackeys, uh, Mercedes and her husband were there. Uh, she's I saw her eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. It might have been closer to seven at Bacon, and she remembered me. <laughs> we were asking about the owls and stuff, the brown crest. Uh, yeah, so that panel was fairly small, so I could have asked questions during, but I did until later. Uh, yeah, that was near the middle, though. There were other panels. The The first panel was that I went to this today was... I believe Andy Weir's panel is what I went to first, and then the NASA one. So it was kind of like last year, which is the Andy Weir panel, and and he's written some other books, and he was, at the same time I was writing my epic, like, space stoner comedy thing, and then the Silly Track epic uh, the, the this year and last year, he was writing a slacker comedy epic space opera. His publisher and he mutually decided after 700 pages, 7,000 pages, words, 7,000 words, 70,000 words, that they would stop writing it and that it didn't work. I didn't. Mine's still coming, so, yeah, I'm still good. <laughs> I did not give up on it. I just, uh, it wasn't quite ready yet, so I wanted to work on mine. My publisher is okay with it, my version. It's no connection. It's just that we happen to start on the same time. At the same writing workshop, he was the director of the writing. That this uh, we was doing the workshop, and a bunch of us decided to do our own things. Uh, that we were doing our own things. Uh, the 2015 was the Bacon one. Though that was different. This was, this was. Uh, uh, well, yeah, that would have been Bacon, but this was Andy. This would have been last year. It was 2016. So this would have been Silly Track. When I was doing Silly Track and Waymarker and that, that thing. That's what I did. So that was the, so. This last year, I was doing three other books that haven't come out yet, and uh, yeah, that uh, years after leaving was 2015. That was with the the Winter Twins suggestion. Uh, that was the Stoner comedy, and then there's and then there's Waymarker, which was 2016, and Silly Track was 2017. Yeah, so every year I'm working on something else. Uh, yeah, so anyway, there's there's. Uh, yeah, so even though Mark Scars is busy all the time, I'm busy all the time doing books, and being creative, doing other things. Um, yeah, trying to keep all the characters straight. And I guess uh, this was too much for Andy Weir to keep his uh, all his characters straight, whereas uh, it wasn't too much for me to do mine. I like epics. I like doing... I start out with a lot of these writers, at the, and there's was a writer's workshop as well. A lot of them... So you'll start at the end and come up with an ending first to do the beginning or, or start with an outline first. And those things are good and well and done. I find it more useful as well as doing an outline to do the first three chapters of a story first and try to figure out as a short story would this work and then, okay, there's parts of this that are interesting that I'm going to expand on and it becomes a short novel very quickly and then it becomes it's done <laughs> you know it's a novel it's a, like 
Oh shit, I've done 400 pages already. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'll need to trim that down to 300 and stuff. <laughs> My publisher, of course, is Mars Cards. <laughs> but uh, he's not that hard on us. So. Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't really care either way. Do whatever you um, just, But yes, uh, he's not really a publisher. I don't really have one. But but when I get one, it's probably Amazon. Uh, but yeah, the the other search not quite right yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there were a lot of writing workshops that I went to. There was a NASA workshop that I went to. Uh, that they were talking about SETI, search for intelligence. When it was at Bacon, when it was the same talk years ago, 2014, 2013, it was Seth Shostak. And the name is hard to pronounce. Seth Shostak. Uh, yeah, it's an older man who was uh, who was doing that. And now now the next generation has come up that we're doing some of that stuff. There was a black hole panel. I missed that. Doors were closed, and there were like, like a dozen of us out there. And I jokingly said on the thing that they that well, this is an example of a black hole in action. You have the black hole that sucked everyone in, and you have a few of you left out, and that's the event horizon into the Hawking radiation. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the event horizon, right? So if you get sucked in, then yeah, yeah, the event horizon is the door. Yeah. Psst. The singularity is at the door. <laughs> but needless to say, we didn't get in, even being smart ass. Uh, yeah, so. Um, I'll have to lunch at the, the, play, uh, the oddly named social policy. Had a, had a, had a uh, psycho donut at one point. It was psycho in the drink. Um, yeah, Psycho Donuts was in production as an idea while I was back at San Jose State in the 2000s. And there was, somebody was thinking of this weird donut place they were going to make up, and now it's a donut place. So, cool. Uh, sure. Uh, I don't know if social policy was or not, but it sounds like something they would have thought of. <laughs> I know that for a while there was a magazine that came out called Helium that was one of the students from San Jose State St. group. Uh, did. yeah, so that lasted until 2012, 2013, somewhere around there, and went away. Just recently, I think it got sold off to somebody else. He went on to do other things. Magazines do last a little while, but not too much. Uh, yeah. Do what you love. Yeah. Uh, apparently Mercedes Lackey and her husband, uh, have separate office rooms and separate beds because they have weird sleeping habits. And, of course, Mr. Lackey, they, 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 they had this odd rapport that was going on, which they had at the con seven years ago as well, when they had a sort of jokingly that, you know, she was, this is her second husband. But it's been like 30, almost 30 years, so it's like, pfft, yeah. The second husband, but, you know. And, and the joke is that all, well, she had all the money and all the power and everything, and he had... And he was like the the gold digger. That's the joke. That's the thing there. I'm sure that's not exactly what's going on, but that's what they joked about. <laughs> and he kept mentioning her boobs for some reason. Yeah, so... Taking that, that lackey's... Uh, Mercedes lackey's uh, husband is rather easygoing. And he and he enjoys, you know, this, oh, this, this high-energy... Published 130 books, lady who's just on fire. You, there's probably gonna be fiery to the day she dies. She's gonna be like, ah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she said that there's somebody else that's a that's a higher. Um, our Arthur has more books than her. Technically, yes, there is, but I would say she's the most prolific currently living fantasy writer. Currently, American. She is, actually. Lackey's the most highest fantasy writer. So, yes, she, she currently... The other lady has the title of most writ, most books, but she has the most fantasy books. That's different. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, uh, in that genre. Yeah. So... Now, it, it would be... Uh, yeah. So... Somebody that's not... Yeah. 
when I would be technically more of a computer user than a computer than a computer like nerd technically I would be I mean I I know how to do certain basic QA fixing stuff that's you know easy stuff like you know oh this thing doesn't turn on a certain way I can figure out why it doesn't turn on a certain way that's not at all I mean that's just uh, basic stuff yeah, I do that uh <laughs> In terms of computers, uh, I'm not a gamer really. I used to be when I was younger, but I, I didn't really change. I didn't really. I do playthroughs. I watch playthroughs. I just. I watch a lot. I'm a watcher. I'm one of the watchers. Oh, and I also did see. Um, I also did see uh, Stan Lee. Speaking of the watchers, I did see Stan Lee at the end. Uh, Coming out, they cleared a path, he came out, they wheeled him out, made eye contact as Kitty Key. <laughs> Ooh, he didn't say anything though. So, we go, oh no, the fan wasn't supposed to. Uh, and there was a weird writing workshop that was down in the like what was amounted to a basement that was on the other side of the thing and that was boring. And there was a guy in there, was, I swear it was the same guy from last year. <laughs> Asking about art. He's in a convention that has art tables, that has artists row, that has illustrators row, that has yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. Totally could ask them. Apparently didn't. Now, now the thing is, when you go to a con one of these cons... I understand some people are shy and introverted. I'm not. I, I get it. <laughs> some of them are introverted and they don't want to go up and ask what's his name, big big shot, artist, illustrator guy, how do you get your start? Uh, they don't even want to research it. Some of them are so shy they don't want to research it. They're down in the game room going, I'm not going to go up there. I'm afraid of that guy. Whatever he's going to say to me, he's going to reject me. Don't think they're going to reject you. Because they're not. Uh, I I realize it's overwhelming when you get somebody that's a firebrand like Mercedes going on about how you have to absolutely get a publisher and production thing and you have to get a book thing and wow. She can say that after 130 books have been printed and that everyone loves the name. Okay. But if you're don't be intimidated by that. Go to somebody like the Winter Twins. Go to the Shira boy. Go to talk to the uh, your boy. He's probably my age. Uh, go to <laughs> um. Go to uh, go to uh, uh, yeah. Ta um, uh, Melinda Sodgrass was nice. You can talk to her. She was talking to a bunch of people. <laughs> She's a little older than me, I think. A little bit. Not much. A little bit. Um, I didn't guess. You know, um, it's not nice to guess. Women's age, you don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Mrs. Snod Miss, Ms. Mrs. Snodgrass. Interesting last name. Um, <laughs> yes, she wrote Star Trek episodes. And was later a producer. Later a, yeah, one of the producers. With Jerry Taylor. A um, boy, Jerry. Uh, later, there's a bug in here. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I get it, there's shy nerd people at the convention that probably just sit there in the back, even though they have, like, a special blue pass or something. They don't want to talk to anybody. Like, no, I don't talk to them. And actually, they make it sound like it's really hard to get to be on a panel, but toward the end of these conventions, you can get on a panel. You can do it. <laughs> Uh, toward the end, some of them just don't show up. So what you do is you uh, <laughs> you get to know the people behind the scenes, and then you end up. Now maybe that doesn't necessarily work all the time, or even half the time. Sometimes it does. Like at this thing that was down in the middle of nowhere, these are two or three guys that weren't even weren't even supposed to be doing a panel. They were just down there. That actually happened to me. I was I was at. Uh, Bacon. Years ago, I mentioned that the first day, 
that was a bacon. And now the slideshow has ended rendering, so I'm going to do that. But I'm almost done with my third day here. And I was rambling about dating. This is funny. Because that's what nerds talk about. Yeah, I, had, I didn't go into that. Yes, I totally am a nerd. I'm a game-enjoying, enthusiast fan. Nerd. Uh, the, the Savage thing was great. The other stuff was great. But but anyway, the um, the point is like the uh, the ghost the ghost hunters thing. Uh, I got to be on a panel uh, when the ghost hunters people didn't show up uh, for their panel, and uh, and some of the some of the overflow people were like wandering around sad that they didn't get to go on a panel. And it just so happens that yeah, that Brian and Kathy Story were dressed as Ghostbusters. And they said, you know what, we can have a panel. Let's do it. We'll just do our own panel. It'll be like a group, but it'll be our own panel. So we went into the to the gopher hole room and had a had a panel. And there was a mod, a mod showed up. We couldn't just do it on our own, we had to have a mod. But he just thought he was okay with it. He's like, oh Brian, I know you, it's okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so we had a mod and a ghost panel. It was great, it was awesome. We told ghost stories. So I've done it once at Bacon. Uh, almost did it again at. Uh, I almost did a table once at a Bacon. It was the you know, Wonder one. Yeah, it was the one with uh, where David Weber showed up, and there was like, we don't have anybody for this one group over here. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I'll sit at the table. I'm not supposed to, but I will. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. That lasted about maybe five minutes until the guy showed up. Well, I'm just watching it for you. Nothing happened. <laughs> so, okay, I'm taking more for it. Uh, uh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, too bad that Bacon um, moved to Santa Rosa or wherever they moved. Um, yes, well, this is the end of my thing on... Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, Silicon Comic Con, day three. Yeah, um, I did not meet up with Wozniak this time. <laughs> oh well, I did not find these are things I did not do. I did not find uh, Adam Savage afterward, although Adam Savage's little uh, like costume repair room. What that was, the repair room, that was the secret room, that was, he was telling his people to run it, so he was never there. At one point, he was, though, today, and there he was in costume, <laughs> and I waved to him. It was him. So that was cool. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I did not ask about Newt the Fridge. Sorry, Mark's cards, I didn't ask him about that. Uh, I didn't get to do it. Um, I'm assuming that because nobody brought it up, that the new show did it already, and there was no reason to ask that question. I'm assuming the new show already done it. So. <laughs> I have to look that up. Anyway, so, uh, or something like it. Or disproved it. Yeah. So, I'm going to go on to the slideshow panel. And, uh, yeah, you've watched, uh, this is the recap. Nothing really unusual happened except for, oh yeah, before I go, ooh, i got to remember this one. The end of the slideshow. I remember it did a reference to a, a man whose crotch had gaffer's tape on it. So this was during one of, and Mr. Lackey is a comedian too, but this actually happened. There was, and a lot of humor is what actually happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so there was a, uh, there was a, uh, an actor method actor, or a new actor on the set of a, uh, like they were doing a, like a commercial and the actor that he had hired to be in the commercial like there were birds and falcons and avians and things involved somewhere because he does that kind of aviary falconer thing he used to, now they've retired and they let other people do it, but they used to, I guess this is a while back, and uh, there was also a story where a, a bird like taloned her in the hand it was just trying to land but it sort of went they have powerful talons big brand. anyway <laughs> um, but yeah uh, but but anyway this other guy this story was uh, yeah, 
this other story was uh, oh yeah and there was a, there was a parrot there's a they have a parrot a pet parrot well they have lots of parrots now the lackeys and uh and apparently the, this young male parrot was attempting to hump them at one point apparently i guess they could tell that it was trying to, to hump them um yeah didn't didn't do details but i wonder if he does his own rule 34 online because he is an illustrator Maybe that illustrator dude was looking for illustration should have asked this laggy guy about, about illustration. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, there's there was another guy that last year for a panel asking about, like, writing workshop tips. Even though there were at least three of those writing workshops going on as panels at the show, I didn't need to just look it up because there totally were, like, three writing workshops going on. It's just like... You can ask the author, sure, but that's like fine. You can, and when one day when I have a table and my books are out there, and that'll probably be next year, you can ask me about that. But I will say there's a panel that keeps going. <laughs> you should go to it. Yes, go ask somebody who knows more about it than I do. I only have three books out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Go on. Well, that's good, man. It's that knows what's going on. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, oh, he's keep me away. Anyway, so this actor. Uh, back to the actor before I close it. Man, this is long. Before I close this, the uh, I was rambling about dating. Or not dating in this case. And, uh, yeah, that's a different that's a different can of worms. Uh, this actor guy is supposed to stand by this ritzy Lamborghini and he's really nervous because it's a Lamborghini it's a Lambo if he touches it even he's gonna be like <gasps> you know he'll just freak out a rich guy whoever owns it will freak out maybe or he thinks he and so he's supposed to walk up to it pretend like he's getting out of it and then look all dramatic because he's an actor and he's just, like, this will be a car race I get they're racing cars too it's just Bizarre! These two old people racing cars and flagging cars and flagging the racetrack and grabbing, jumping in to grab pieces of race car. Man, they went on for the longest. It was a fun panel, but <laughs> it was fun last time. Big on too. Uh, maybe they'll come back for fan That would neat. Uh, and anyways, uh, the guy <laughs> getting to the guy, uh, the actor guy who gets the Lambo shot. They do the scene twice. He's got like he does the scene pretty good the first time, then he does it again the second time. And, this is good. Second time. And then they're looking at the dailies. And they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> this guy, they didn't check his wardrobe. Because, like, stuck to his balls, to his crotch area. He said his balls, but I said his crotch area. He's stuck to his nuts. It's a big piece of gaffer's tape. <laughs> big gaffer's tape, like, right there on his junk. He's like, ah, oh, damn it. I'll do it over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Gosh damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's got to do it over again. Not half as funny as many years ago when the. Uh, shit, the, the, the doll animator lady had taken a. Ew, the doll malfunctioned and it. It's, it's quill marker thing was like a penis. Like a dick. But that was a different show, so it's not relevant. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, d don't be afraid to like go and ask illustrators and writers to look up online. They'll look it up online later on, you know, if you want to do, you know, something, blog or something. And 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 yeah, there's a little bit of deception with blogging in that. You know, there's a lot actually. Uh, the bloggers that are really famous. Here, the bloggers that are really famous, unlike this one, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, they got connections. They, they, they have, they have. There's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the ones that have viral videos almost immediately had some sort of connection, made their video go viral. Even if they say a million times, "No, I was totally an unknown," and I thought in the end, "No, you didn't. You were not an unknown." <laughs> and even my even my half brother is like 
Uh, even Andy Weir, he must have had some other connections before. Well, he did, actually. He was a scientist. He knew people before he did anything. Uh, yeah, or otherwise his publisher would never call him. But you knew people, dude. Come on. <laughs> I mean, he clearly knows people because now he really knows people because, like, he had made a fan fiction about Ready Player One. And the guy clearly knows stuff now because the studio that was doing Ready Player One, Universal, called him to clarify that his fan fiction was canon or not after the movie came out. The movie just came out. They actually called him about his fan fiction to make sure that it was all legally binding. A studio called the author. That's that's insane. So that guy's totally like famous. He's claiming like I'm not famous. I'm not famous. No, he's totally famous. But it's okay. This time he admitted it. <laughs> he didn't know why the studio was doing that. But yeah, um, you know you have content people like like the. Channel Awesome or Stone Gremlins or PewDiePie or let's it's just, uh, so uh, Pubble Cobb, uh, a lot of the, the Eats, uh, LA Beast, Reckless Eating, stuff like that. Well, that have a niche and they do a blog show and they're very famous because they have a viral video here and there or they, they have some studio Patreon help also helping them. Uh, you used to, it used to be about four or five years ago that you could actually become. You could actually quit your day job and be a blogger. Not so much anymore. The studios bought out all those big names. So what you do now is you don't quit your day job. You have a day job. I do not, but <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't make any money on any of my content. <laughs> I can't make a living. But I can have fun doing it. I have fun doing it. And then whoever I meet in the future, they gotta have fun doing it. That's what it is. It's the conditions. Of the t <laughs> there are some conditions. <laughs> they gotta have fun blogging, acting bizarre on the internet, and not be embarrassed about it at all. Because <laughs> it's not that embarrassing. Really. Yeah. <laughs> That's Silicon Valley Comic Con. Peace out.